Uh, we are, I'm just to, to tell the audience, uh, we are uh, waiting for uh, Jeff Kosov. Uh, he is on his way. He's having a bit of connection difficulties, and I fully understand that because I uh, always joke uh, I'm not very good at computers myself. Oh, it says he wants the mic, so I think he is coming in. Uh, what we're going to be talking about today uh, is uh, primarily about Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, um, which Jeff is almost certainly the world expert on. Um, and uh, I, of course, know quite a bit about it uh, because it's really key to the functioning of Wikipedia. And here he is, Jeff. I've just introduced you in a loving way, so. Thank you. I apologize uh, for whatever the tech. probably way too much about Section 230, uh, and I talk about the benefits of the internet that Section 230 created, some of the drawbacks, but when I talk about the benefits, um, Wikipedia is always at the top of the list because I have trouble imagining how Wikipedia could function without <laughs> Section 230. I think he's gone. I'm not really sure what's going on. Uh, now he's having another problem, but uh, yes, uh, this is quite interesting. But um, anyway, uh, we'll just carry on. Uh, so Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, uh, as uh, many of you probably know, uh, is one of the, well, Jeff has called it the 26 words that created the internet. But effectively, uh, what it does is it gives a platform like Wikipedia um, and actually, not just Wikipedia today, but also from the very beginning, and I think that's a, a piece of what I want to talk about, the ability to offer an open platform that anyone can come, they can, they can join the community, they can start writing. Uh, and if they do something bad, uh, then the Wikimedia Foundation, which is the charity that I set up that owns and operates Wikipedia, uh, doesn't become liable for what they've done. And that, in fact, we can we can act proactively to moderate, to do the right thing in the community uh, without thereby incurring uh, huge liability. I mean, one of the things that people talk about a lot, which is actually not in Section 230. In fact, Section 230 eliminates this concept is the idea that there's some kind of strong dichotomy between a platform and a publisher. Uh, the idea that uh, if you engage in any moderation whatsoever, then you therefore become responsible for all the content on the website uh, would be devastating uh, to the internet and to platforms like Wikipedia. Uh, when I started Wikipedia uh, at the very beginning, uh, literally there was, there was no money for anything. I mean, one of the reasons Wikipedia is designed the way it is, is that when I launched Wikipedia, we were really uh, just at the, you know, we were in the depths of the dot-com crash. Um, it really wasn't possible to raise money. And actually, thank goodness we didn't uh, raise money because if we had raised money, uh, you know, the typical instinct would be, oh, we're having some kind of a problem on the website. And so, therefore, we need to go out and hire moderators and, and do all these things. We couldn't do that. We had no money to do that. It wasn't feasible. So we had to devise ways and invent ways for the community uh, to handle all the moderation duties, and that meant trusting people in a really, uh, in a really big and a really important way. And so, um, oh, he's back. So, in those early days, in particular, the Section Two Thirty was very much on my mind. Uh, you know, I actually thought to myself, not knowing very much about uh, the law. I mean, who needs to think they know anything about the law as a <laughs> as an entrepreneur? But I said, well, wow, what if somebody posts something terrible? And actually, it was a big question in the early days of the community. What if somebody does X, some terrible thing? Are we going to get sued and the whole thing's going to get shut down? Well, if that had been true, then I wouldn't have been able to wield Wikipedia in the way that it did, which meant because there was no money, there, there would have been no way to build it at all. I couldn't afford to hire uh, dozens of moderators to pre-moderate everything that got posted on the site. Um, and I certainly couldn't expect that Wikipedia would be the result if there was no moderation of any kind, uh, because there would be complete chaos and, and uh, you know, very, very bad conduct. So when we think about 
uh, what Section 230 has meant. We, you know, oftentimes people think about the the really big platforms, Twitter, Facebook, Google, etc., Wikipedia. But actually, I am as concerned about what happens uh, if we change Section 230 or eliminate Section 230 for uh, the small startups. Now, this has really become uh, an issue, I would say, as part of a larger sort of backlash against big tech. Um, but it, it's also become an issue because obviously Donald Trump uh, started tweeting uh, as typical for Donald Trump, things that didn't actually make any rational sense, uh, calling Section 230 a national security risk and so on and so forth. Uh, but it, it has been put on the table uh, as something that possibly needs to be looked at for potential reform. Uh, and I think this is a very, very um, dangerous and, and risky kind of situation. So when it says Jeff wants the microphone, I would love to give Jeff the microphone, but I'm not really sure that I'm able to do that. Um, I think he just can come in and go. I don't know if anybody from the conference is around to help us. I'm not sure I'm possibly speaking into a void, uh, but hopefully people are there. Um, I see there's comments. I'm going to go to the comments. Oh, so Jeff, Firefox doesn't work. Okay. Oh, good. Idel Calvar, I see you. Uh, you can hear me. Okay, fantastic. Well, so uh, what what we... You know, we're, we're at this moment where there's been this big tech backlash. Uh, it's ongoing. People have deep concerns about what, uh, for example, Facebook and Twitter and so on have, have wrought uh, upon the world. But what's uh, really interesting uh, is, oh, yeah, Jeff wants to know what the biggest myths about Section 230 are. Now, he, of course, knows, but it, he's prompting me to help me keep talking. So I think for, for many people... Uh, you know, there, there, so there are myths. One, one of the myths, one of the strongest myths, you just see it all the time in debates, um, even by people who are who ought to know better, uh, law professors sometimes, who think that Section 230 means you have to either be a, a, a publisher or a platform, which is completely wrong. It's completely the opposite of, of what it is. You, it, the idea is if you're a publisher, so say you're the New York Times, this is the idea, this is wrong, then you're responsible for everything that goes up on your website and you're a publisher. And if you're a platform, then you have no responsibility for anything that goes up on your platform. But that, that dichotomy is completely false. So uh, a publisher like the New York Times, um, if they have comment sections on their website, they are protected under Section 230, just like Wikipedia is, just like Facebook, just like Twitter, just like small websites and, and, and small places on the internet that want to have open uh, discussion forums. And so this idea, this, this dichotomy between platform and publisher is, is really not valid. Uh, it, it's not in Section 230. It's not in U.S. law at all. Um, and it's something that actually, I think, confuses the issue. Um, and in fact, it, it, it causes people to believe that, oh, look, Facebook or Twitter is intervening by uh, banning QAnon posters. So therefore, they're acting like a publisher Therefore, they're responsible for everything that happens on the site. That's exactly what isn't true. Um, another big myth about Section 230, and this is one that's coming up increasingly lately, uh, is the idea that in order to qualify for Section 230, uh, you have to be uh, ideologically neutral. You have to be content neutral. Um, well, this is just, again, it's not in the law. It's completely false. And it might sound tempting. And, and certainly you might expect from Wikipedia, where we are, steadfastly, uh, you know, ideologically neutral, particularly if we think you have to make a distinction between the Wikipedia community values of neutral point of view, which has always been one of our core values, and the Wikimedia Foundation. The Wikimedia Foundation does not intervene in the political nature of the content whatsoever. It's just not a thing that we do. It's, it's just not even necessary. It's not something that we care about. And but. So you might think that I would say, oh, yeah, of course, that's fine. As long as you're neutral, you should be able to do whatever because that's what Wikipedia is and, and that's fine. But actually, that's that's not just not the law. It's actually a really bad idea. And, and one of the areas to to think about in order to understand why that's a really bad idea, I like to give um, a couple of sort of obvious political examples um, and then one actual real practical example. So an obvious political example would be the... Um, <clears throat> Uh, a, a, a Bible study group. So uh, a church or, or just some, some private individuals, they want to get together and they want to have a Bible study group. 
and quite possibly since they're in a Bible study group, they are uh, politically conservative. Um, you know, they are they're into Christianity and they want to discuss it and they want to study the Bible and they want to have an, an open forum where they do that. And they basically want to say, look, we are Christians and we're studying the Bible. We're not here to be trolled by non-believers, and that's just not what we're here for, and, and we're going to block you. Like, if you come in and you say, I think the Bible is nonsense, you're just going to be blocked. We're not neutral about this. This is this is what we care about. Uh, another example, if you don't like that one, is a Greenpeace. So maybe a group of environmental activists wants to get together and discuss, um, you know, the 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 the, the problems of climate change. They don't want climate change deniers coming in and disrupting their conversation. They want to be able to block you for political reasons. Those are both things that actually exist and they're real on the internet. But then there's another type of example, and this is a real one because I, I've, I've chatted with them. There's a lovely, lovely website um, that is uh, about uh, uh, Tolkien's Lord of the Rings. That's what they love. It's their hobby. They They love the movies. They love the um, they love the, the books, obviously, and they've got a message board and a forum and they, and they have posts and people are doing things and they're chatting all the time and they're making memes and they're doing all kinds of great stuff. And it's a sweet place. And they basically run it in a way that says, Hey, uh, you know, we don't allow certain types of, of attacks on other people. We try to be a nice community. Um, we probably, I don't know if they do this, but probably if you go in and you say, I think Lord of the Rings is like the worst literature in English language that's ever been written. They're going to just ban you because like that's not what they're there for. If we didn't have Section 230, they would suddenly then become responsible for everything that happens on the website, which is really not not fair. Right. All these places I just talked about, a Bible study group or whatever. If somebody comes in and they post some illegal content or they are they're harassing or something like that. We don't want an internet where the provider has to say, ooh, I'm not sure I can do something about that because if I do, I suddenly become responsible for anything that anybody ever posts on the site, which is a huge burden because eventually somebody's going to do something terrible. So it's not, th this idea that neutrality either is um, a part of, of you know, Section 230 or should be, I think is very problematic. I'm I'm back for a second. Uh, hopefully, it will not. I for some reason it really does not like me, and it keeps kicking me off after I grab the mic. Uh, so I I want to ask you a question before they yep. kick me off again. Um, okay. So everyone is really angry at big tech, uh, and they almost make it seem as though big tech, Facebook, Twitter, Google are the only ones that receive any. Uh, protection but from 230 and it seems almost inevitable that some change is going to happen uh, have you thought anything about what those changes should be yeah i mean i have and i, I i'm hoping that change to section 230 is not inevitable i think it's actually a very nicely done balance and, and actually one of the more more brilliant uh pieces of of law um but i think that when we think about the this backlash of big about big tech and what changes we might want to see. Let's just say about tech regulation more broadly. I think many people are under a misconception that Section 230 is, is the thing that allows for tech monopolies to emerge, that if it weren't for that, we would have a more competitive, more open Internet. And I, I don't see that at all. I don't see the relationship whatsoever. I mean, if you ask me uh, where there are potential problems around this, and I'm not, I'm not putting forward a case that we should regulate on this basis, but I'm saying if that's what we're worried about, I would look at things like, you know, when I have an iPhone or an Android phone, it's very difficult to uh, add any software to my iPhone or to my Android phone that doesn't come from the Apple Store or the uh, Google Play Store, which means they are able to extract enormous revenues from app makers. And this is very different. I mean, you can imagine the uproar back at the height of Microsoft power if they had said, oh, well, in, in, in Windows... The next version of Windows, the only software you can install on your computer has to be sold through Microsoft. And basically, we're going to get 30% of the revenue of everything. People would have gone completely insane because that's a ridiculous thing. And somehow we've gotten to that place where suddenly as consumers, we feel like it somehow is okay that I, I'm not allowed to install anything I want on my phone. Now, we should be fair. There are some benefits to it. We don't have the same kind of problems with viruses and things like that that have been plaguing the, the desktop PC for a long time. But... It has generated, if that's where you want to look for monopoly power, that's one of the places. Also, other aspects, and I'm completely unqualified to, to know very much about this, I would look at the, the ad tech industry and the questions around 
uh, privacy and data and how is that not not only the privacy concerns, which are legitimate in and of themselves, but also is that whole sort of model, is that gener generated anything that we could look at from an antitrust point of view where new players can't really enter into the um, advertising technology market simply because the existing players have a dominant position that through technological means are very hard to break. I don't have the answer there. I'm not sure that's it, but that's where I would start sniffing around rather than Section 230, which primarily protects ordinary people like us to, that, that, that we, that companies are allowed to sort of say, oh, yeah, come and post things, right? Come and interact in a social way, which is really the dream of the internet. That's really what the internet, I mean, it's Wikipedia. It's, it's all of these things. So, uh, you know, I, in, in terms of Section 230, the, the only things that I would be uh, sort of a little sympathetic to, and this is where I'm not, a, this is where I actually would love to chew on this with Jeff for a few hours sometime. Um, so let's, let's think about copyright. So with copyright, we have the Digital Millennium Copyright Act, um, which has a certain very, I think, quite a good procedure for notice and takedown. So uh, for those who don't know, let's say somebody posts a, a copyrighted video um, on uh, on Wikipedia, right? Well, in our case, the community would take it down immediately, so it never comes to this. But let's say they did. Well, whoever owns the copyright can can say, "Ooh, I'm going to notify." Hey, this is this is my work. You don't have permission to show it. Then we can contact the person who.